Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I'm unboxing this Derwent Academy Artist's Paint Box Set. It's in a big cardboard box, I'm just flipping it over to show you the back. And on the back it describes what you get inside the box as well as all the colours that you get. So let's open it up and have a look inside. So it's a pretty thick heavy duty cardboard box. Um, and it's because the item inside is quite heavy duty. So inside you receive, if I can get him out, quite a large wooden briefcase. Which I was actually surprised that it was real wood. Like it, um, I thought maybe it might be that veneer or something like that, but I'm pretty sure it is actually wood. It might have a veneer coating to make it look prettier. And I'm just showing you the brass clasp on the front and the little handle, which is quite nice. So you just flip those tabs open. And on the top, it also has the Derwent Academy logo, Artist Paints on the top. And let's pop her open. So inside, you get all these wonderful art supplies as well as a neat and nifty box to carry them all in, including a little spot in the front to put your brushes and so on and so forth to keep them safe. And I'm just going to pull each piece out and show you it a bit close up, so let's pop the camera onto autofocus so that you can see them. The first set that I'm pulling out is the acrylic paint set, and you get 12 mil tubes. So they're 12 tubes with 12 mils in each one. And that there was the oil paints. And this one here is the watercolour paints. So you get a good selection. They come in pretty standard colours. And the, stand, the colours kind of match across the range. So you'll get a similar colour in the oil, the acrylic and the watercolour. Which is handy if you're using mixed media. And you get this little mixing tray made of plastic, quite handy. I was just seeing if you could pull out the lining, because on the front of the box it shows it without the lining, as you maybe you could pull it out so you can use it for storage. But the lining is glued in, so you can't pull it out without destroying it a little bit. I may have to get in there later and pull it out properly. But it is handy to hold everything in. Now on the top layer you do get some more products. So the first part I'm going to pull out, and I'm just trying to get it into frame so you can see it, but it's almost impossible, um, are these artist pads. You get two artist's pads. One of them is the artist acrylic paint pad. It's 12 sheets of 300 GSM paper. And the other one that you get, I'm just trying to pull him out. is the artist's watercolour pad. It's 12 sheets, 300 GSM paper with watercolour sizing so that you can paint with water on it and it doesn't seep through. But the other parts that you do get, which were a little bit of a surprise to me, I thought the set was just paints and paper, but you get a set of four sketching pencils. So you get a size 2B, a size B, a HB and a H, which are all great um, pencil qualities to have. Like I'm probably going to use these ones a lot. I have lots of pencils but these actually turned out quite nice. And just showing them there. Some standard graphite pencils. And you also get a handy little sharpener. They give you that to keep your pencil sharp. Nice um, jewel ended there so you've got the um, larger hole for larger jumbo pencils and the regular one and the part that you can't quite see at the top and it took me a bit to wiggle them out is you get six paint brushes so you get three hogs hair watercolor paint brushes I'm just showing you them there nice little gold ferrule it's probably gold plated and the other paint brushes you get are a set of three acrylic brushes and they're synthetic, so take on hair. 
just going to close this up and pop the box to the side and put all the things together in the middle just to show you what you received. Now we're going to be unwrapping each of these and looking at them in a bit more detail. So let's just unwrap the watercolour pad. Took me a few goes with this pair of scissors to get that to actually tear and get that wrapping off. So this is the watercolour pad and I'm just going to get that plastic out of the way and there's your 12 sheets of paper it's quite nice quality paper nice and thick and sturdy and it's one-sided so it's not dual-sided paper it's one-sided so one side has the texture and the sizing on it and the other side is just plain um, smooth paper I'm trying to show the texture but my camera is not picking it up so that's why you got a close-up of a wide piece of paper. The second paper pad is the acrylic paper pad and I'm just going to get the plastic off of that one for you. Everything had plastic on it which is strange because it's in a sealed box and it has a note at the top that it's recommended that you put one to two coats of Derwent Academy Gesso Primer onto each sheet and then let it dry before you use it and that's a, a simple thing for acrylic because acrylics stick better to other acrylic so if you're going to be painting an acrylic painting it's always best to pop a bit of primer on and I'm just looking at the paper quality itself nice and thick as well same sort of like rough texture now the texture it's not a natural texture it's been stamped onto the paper you can tell because it's a repeating design but that's okay, like the texture is texture, I'll take it. Let's pop all these to the side and then I'll open up these paint sets. So as I'm opening these up, just want to talk a little bit about the paints that are included. So you get um, some watercolour, some acrylic and some oil paints. I feel like this set is really handy for someone who does one particular style but then wants to try doing it in other mediums. Or doing mixed media because I normally paint mostly in watercolor I don't have um, a set of acrylics or a set of oil paints until now to be able to test on and I can tell you just from painting with these um, for a little while doing the test swatches and I also painted a painting in acrylic um, I'll pop that up in another video but I found that it's really really interesting that the way you paint is quite different and with oil paints especially, it's surprisingly tiring painting with oil paints. Like you have to use a lot of muscle to push the paint around to where you want it. Watercolour paints a lot more, you let the water do the work. But with acrylics and oils, it's a lot more of like brushing and strokes and things like that, which is a lot more difficult. So it might be one of those things that you want to test out um, other mediums, but you don't want to spend an arm and a leg buying all the other sets and the bits and pieces that you need. This is a really handy set. Also really, really good for um, a gift for a budding artist. I always sort of look out for things that would be a gift for, say, you know, your kids or your nieces and nephews and things like that. Um, so that if they're a budding artist, you really want to encourage that creativity. So I always recommend to um, give an art set or any kind of art supplies as a gift because it's always a good idea to encourage that. So I was going to use a sheet of paper here to test the pencils on, but um, I figured I'd just use a piece of printer paper because the pencils, it really doesn't matter what you draw on with. And I may just speed these sections up because it does take me a little while to test these pencils for you. So. I'm just going to write with each pencil and then do a bit of sort of swatching of gradients and stripes and lines and things like that. And then I do a larger swatch of each pencil um, as a shading just to kind of show you the difference between each one. So let's speed it up and we'll look at that. So I'm just doing a swatch of each one. That first one is the H pencil, then the B pencil, 
then the 2B, and then the HB. And here I'm doing like a larger swatch. The first one is the HB, then the 2B, then the B pencil, and then the H at the bottom, and I just label each one. So now that we've tested the pencils, you can see that the 2B is the darkest pencil, and the H is the lightest. Um, I believe that the B stands for bold, and the H stands for hard. So the further you go um, towards the B end, you're going to have a softer pencil that does a bolder line. And the more you go towards the H end, you're going to have a harder pencil that does a thinner, crisp line. But because it's harder, it's a bit more scratchier. So I always recommend something around a HB or a 1 or 2B, only because for watercolour, that way you're not scratching into the paper, which can show up when you paint watercolour over it. Here I'm just testing the sharpener. It's a regular sharpener. There's not really a lot to say about it. I was looking for a larger pencil to test the other side, but I don't really own any jumbo pencils. So I just kind of grabbed another pencil, and that one's already sharpened, so that doesn't really help. Um, but yeah, here's a, an, a graphite pencil that needed a little sharpening. So the ones that came with the set were already sharpened, so there was no real point re-sharpening those. But yeah, it does a good job. It sharpens well, and it's um it's a graphite sharpener, so it sharpens to a nice steady point, which is handy. So let's pop those sharpenings to the side, and I'm going to grab these brushes. Now, whenever you get new brushes, the thing that you want to do is you want to wash out the brushes. So you want to get the um just get some clear water. Okay, now we've got some water. Um, best bet is to, and I'm just drying off my hands because I've got water on them, grab your brushes and dunk them in the water to start with. Just for a second. And then use your fingers and a little bit of water to very gently rub off. It's going to be some sort of starch and it will make the water a little bit cloudy, which will know, that way you'll know you're getting it off. Um, but yeah. I'm just sort of feeling the brushes to see how they kind of shape into a point, which is quite good. So let's do the um, watercolour brushes first. They're very, very soft hog hair, so it's quite good for um, watercolour. It should pull up a lot of paint. And just get all of that starch out. It was weird on the... Um, on the acrylic brushes, on these sort of like synthetic ones, the starch made them really slippery. So I'll be like trying to get that off and my fingers would just slip off of the brush handle, <laughs> like off the ferrule. But it took a bit to get all the starch out. It was kind of really worked into these synthetic ones, which is kind of good if you think about it. Um, it means that they were protected in transport. It just stops them from getting bent or caught or anything like that um, while they're being transported. Once you've got all the starch out, you'll notice that your water has gone from lovely clear to slightly cloudy. You can still use this water. It doesn't really do anything. Um, grab yourself a bit of paper towel or something and then dry it off. You probably don't want to keep them with water in the ferrule part because that can ruin your brushes. Just make sure that you dry your brushes after you finish with them. Even if you don't wash them straight away, pull them out of the water. It's easier to get dry paint off of a brush than it is to get um, bits of paint and stuff from the handle where it's split because you've left it in the water. I have plenty of brushes like that. Probably should be washing them more. But yeah, just showing you each of the brushes there. And now... We are going to be doing watercolour first. So I'm just going to pop the other two out of the way and get the watercolours out and get the watercolour pad. Grab ourselves a sheet of that because I want to test the paper too, just as much as we can. So let's rip out a piece of paper from the pad. It was a little bit difficult to remove but a bit of wiggling got it out. And I'm just going to pop it on the back of here. So, let's test all of these colours. I've sped this up because the actual testing took quite a while. So the first colour we're doing is Lemon Yellow. 
I'm doing a square swatch um, of as much pigment as I can pick up, that's why I go over it a few times. A round little circle of um, just sort of one layer to see how light it is. A couple of lines just to draw and also a circle of water where I dot just one dot of the paint in just to see how it spreads. So the second colour was yellow mud. This third colour is yellow ochre. So you can kind of watch the paint spread as I go. This next colour is brilliant red, which is really nice red. For a watercolour paint, it's really bright. It's quite good. And it also spreads really easily. This one here is crimson red, so a bit more of a dark blood red with a little bit of pink in it. Um, it wasn't as dark as I hoped it would be, which is still really pretty. This next one here is ultramarine blue. It's really beautiful. I love this blue. I'm a bit of a fan of blues, so anything with a gorgeous blue looks like cobalt to me. Um, that's the only blue you get, which is strange. It was really easy to clean up. Just use a damp paper towel. Let's do the next six colours. So the next one you get is violet, purple. So you don't really get a light blue, which is a little bit strange. And the violet I found really difficult to get a good colour out of. So it's kind of a bit pastel, I guess. Um, the next one you get is sap green. And you get two greens, so you get a nice sort of light sap green, which is useful for grass. And you get a really, really nice dark viridian hue which I think Viridian here is probably becoming one of my favourite colours. It's this sort of like forest blue-green. It's really beautiful. And this one here at the bottom is Burnt Umber. And the very last one is called Ivory Black, which makes no sense because ivory is white, but okay. And I did a nice swatch of that, and then I grabbed the um, white after I put them all back. Do, 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 do. In order. I grab a little bit of the white and I did a swatch on the side here, you can only just see it. But I wanted to do that after the black so I could paint a bit on the black and see how bright it is. It's quite a bright white. It's called Zinc Titanium White. Now the next one is acrylics. So I'm spotting them all out. Because acrylics don't move much and you don't really have to add much water, nearly no water, um, I can do like two dots on each tray just to have a little bit of a swatch of each colour. So I'm just going to quickly do that because you have to open each one and it takes a little while. So, first one's first is Titanium White, and I do it just a sort of a little bit of a few swatches and just testing out the brush as well. And then we have Lemon Yellow, and as you can see the colours do repeat from set to set, which is handy for mixed media. And then you have Yellow Med or Yellow Medium. And these came out really bright, and they're almost looking fluorescent on the camera, but they are very bright colours. And this is Yellow Ochre. And you've got your Brilliant Red, which is a really bright colour, it's really nice. And then your Crimson Red, which looks like, it's essentially a blood colour, it's great. Um, and then you have your Blue Lake, which is a nice light blue. And Thalo Blue, which is your kind of standard dark blue. Then a light green. and phthalo green so you get a phthalo blue and a phthalo green which is handy and you've got burnt sienna this color is sticky that's the only way i can kind of describe it it's sort of stringy almost and then the last one is called mars black that's all of the acrylic colors and i'm trying to get the um like the rest of the paint up and do a little bit of mixing just to kind of use up what's left and seeing how the colours mix together, so I'm just mixing random colours together and painting a bit. And the colours mix together really, really well. So it doesn't matter what colour you kind of mix together, they like blend really well, no streakiness, no nothing, so you can blend colours together, make your own palette essentially. It's really handy. So um, I'm just going to pop off and get some clean water and wash off that little tray. That will take a few moments and I will be back. Now that I'm back, let's test the oil paints. Now this is the part that I found a bit harder. So I wrapped my little tray in um, cling film. And the reason I did that is because I knew that the oil paints were going to be like impossible to get off of this tray. 
So I thought if I did it in oil, um, the oil paints in this cling film, then I can just throw away the cling film and it makes it a little less messy. Oil paints are a bit more permanent, so you have to be a bit careful if they dry. It's very difficult to get them off of things without solvent, and I don't have any solvent right now, so I just wanted to make it easier on myself. Um, okay, so let's go. So we're starting with titanium white and lemon yellow. See, it takes a little while of pushing the paint around to get a good swatch, and then it took a lot of, like, scrubbing to get it off the brush so that I didn't mix the colours together. This one's yellow med. And that's why I didn't do much more than a square because it took a while just to get a nice square out of each paint, just pushing it around and so on and so forth. Yellow ochre. I felt worn out after this literally. <laughs> it was like a swatching marathon. And um, brilliant red is next. It's not as bright as the acrylic colour but it's still really pretty. And the next one, that's supposed to be crimson red. It's so dark and it took me so much like pushing it around even to get close to the crimson red colour it was supposed to be. And I just folded that over and moved it over a bit to do the next six colours. Yeah, that's me trying so hard to get the, the rest of the red out of the brush. Like it just refused to paint on things. I think in the end I just used a different brush because I didn't want to mix the red into the blues and make purple. So the first one after that is Ultramarine Blue, which is really pretty, but also another difficult colour to apply. And then we have a Thalo Blue. And it should be a Viridian Hue on that one. Actually, it's Ultramarine Blue and then Thalo Blue. Viridian Hue is next. There we go. But they look so dark, it's really strange. Um, I don't know whether that's because I need to have some sort of like linseed oil or solvent to mix with it to make them a bit easier to spread. <coughs> Excuse me. This one here is sap green. And we have burnt umber. Actually, that may be more green. Nope, that was about umber. And this very last one is the black, which again is called ivory black, which makes no sense because ivory is white. But if they want to call it that, fine. And here I'm just using the rest of the oil paints because I didn't want to waste them and doing a little quick painting and just seeing what it's like. It's like quite easy to do a really quick painting. Um, just kind of grabbing a bit of colour from here and there and there. Boom. Painting. Done. Lovely. Just super quick painting just to see what it was like to paint with oils. It was actually quite hard. Um, so here are my swatches. Um, I've given them overnight to dry so that um, you can see if there's any sort of changes or anything. The um, acrylic paints are really shiny and I kind of like that. Um, they have a real nice shine to them. This is the watercolours. So they've dried overnight. They're not chalky. They don't dust off on your fingers. And brilliant watercolours and then there's the um, pencil swatches that I did and I just want to say that this set is really really good um, the paints are good quality um, they're probably student grade so they're not high pigmented but they're really good quality for testing so stay tuned because what I'm going to be doing is a few paintings using each of the different sets and I will post them in my next video so keep an eye out for those have a sunshiny day